This man was scammed by your mother. If you don't return $15,000 right now, your mother will be arrested for fraud. A police officer who suddenly visited my home and a young man who said he was scammed by my mother. I couldn't understand what they were saying for a moment. However, I shook my head vigorously because I thought my honest and kind mother would never do such a thing. That's impossible. When I claimed that there was a mistake, the police officer thrust an arrest warrant in front of my face. I couldn't even say anything when I was issued an arrest warrant. However, after that, the situation took an unexpected turn. My name is Sebastian Moore. I am a salaried worker at a general company. I am busy with work every day, but I am satisfied because I can do a job that I find rewarding. While leading such a busy life, I took care of my mother when I returned home. My mother was originally weak and one day, she collapsed due to overwork while working part-time at a supermarket. Since then, my mother has quit her part-time job and has been living a life of recuperation at home. I took my time to do things around the house, but I helped with cooking, laundry, shopping, etc. Of course, my father also accompanies us when he has time to go shopping or take a walk, but my father's job is busy, so I was the one who took care of my mother most of the time. I have never thought that taking care of my mother was troublesome or unpleasant even once. My mother raised me up to this point. I took care of my mother with the intention of being a good son. However, my mother was always worried and kept apologizing. Sebastian, I'm really sorry. You're tired from work, but you're helping me. I shook my head and answered. Don't worry about it, mom. My mother's apologies are repeated every day. I really don't mind but I couldn't convey that to my mother. Not only with words, but I also showed it with my attitude, but I wasn't confident that my mother understood it well. I was having such frustrating days. A few days later, I was cleaning the house when the intercom rang. I thought it might be a delivery, so I opened the front door, and there was a man in a police uniform and a young man about 20 years old standing there. I tilted my head. Excuse me, do you need anything from us? When I asked, the self-proclaimed police officer showed me his police notebook. May I have a word with you? The self-proclaimed police officer said so and looked at me as if he were glaring at me. When I instinctively stiffened, the self-proclaimed police officer quickly put his police notebook in his pocket. Then he spread a paper with an arrest warrant written on it and showed it to me. Actually, your mother has been issued an arrest warrant on suspicion of fraud. I exclaimed in surprise. What? My mother? The police officer nodded. I looked closely at the paper that had been spread out, even though I was surprised. Certainly. My mother's name was written there, and where the charge was written, it said fraud. The self-proclaimed police officer was so concerned that I was looking at it that he quickly folded the paper and put it in his pocket. Feeling a little uneasy about the self-proclaimed police officer's actions, I shook my head in a hurry. No, no, there must be some mistake. Did my mother really commit fraud? Could you have mistaken her for someone else? When I asked with an unbelieving feeling, the self-proclaimed police officer nodded with a solemn expression. As a son, I understand that you naturally don't want to believe it. But unfortunately, it's true. Your mother has scammed this man out of his money. The self-proclaimed police officer turned to the man. The man was always looking down and never raised his face even when I looked at him. When the man finally noticed my gaze and raised his face a little to meet my eyes, he quickly looked away and looked down again. As I stared at the man, the self-proclaimed police officer began to speak. 
His name is Mr. Jenkins. He was someone who worked with your mother. Mr. Jenkins moved his head slightly while still looking down. I didn't know if it was a nod or a bow. As I watched Mr. Jenkins in that state, I thought to myself. Certainly, my mother had been working part-time at a supermarket until a few months ago. Maybe she met Mr. Jenkins then? Did my mother and Mr. Jenkins have such a conversation at that time? As I was convinced by myself, the self-proclaimed police officer began to speak instead of Mr. Jenkins. When he was complaining that he was having trouble paying his tuition fees, he was told by your mother that she would increase it through stock investment. He then handed over his entire savings of $15,000, which he had saved up by working part-time jobs, etc., but since then, there has been no word from her. The self-proclaimed police officer looked at me and said that. I shook my head, still unable to believe it. No, that can't be true. I'm sorry, I really can't believe it. The self-proclaimed police officer let out a big sigh that seemed forced. I understand how you feel. I think it's hard to believe that someone who suddenly came to you one day claiming to be a police officer and saying that your mother will be arrested for fraud would be telling the truth. But please admit it already. As I stood there unable to say anything, the self-proclaimed police officer continued. Mr. Jenkins says that if you return the $15,000 right away, he will withdraw the complaint. Then the arrest warrant will also be invalidated. What will you do? At the words of the self-proclaimed police officer, I looked at Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins was standing there, looking uneasy, still with his head down. I called out to Mr. Jenkins. Um, Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins looked at me with exaggerated surprise. While tilting my head at Mr. Jenkins' behavior, I asked him. I'm sorry, can I ask you for confirmation? When did you give $15,000 to my mother? Mr. Jenkins looked at the self-proclaimed police officer. The self-proclaimed police officer nodded silently, and Mr. Jenkins answered with his head down. Uh, yeah, let's see. I think it was about a month ago. To Mr. Jenkins' hesitant answer, I asked him further. Ha! Huh? Don't you remember? This is such an important thing. Mr. Jenkins, you were deceived by my mother for $15,000. That's a lot of money. You're lying when you say you don't remember, aren't you? When was it really? When I bombarded him with questions as if I was interrogating him, Mr. Jenkins looked away and fell silent. As I tried to ask him more questions while he was still looking down, the self-proclaimed police officer shifted his body between me and Mr. Jenkins. Anyway. The self-proclaimed police officer who broke in shouted. As I and Mr. Jenkins were surprised by his voice, the self-proclaimed police officer said impatiently. Mr. Moore, are you going to return it right away? Or are you not going to return it? You don't want to have a criminal in your family, do you? You still have time to do the right thing. What are you going to do? I nodded at the self-proclaimed police officer's forcefulness. I see. I understand. I want to take responsibility as a family member. But I don't have that much money here. Can I call my father? When I asked, the self-proclaimed police officer nodded with a satisfied expression. Yes, of course. I took out my smartphone and said. I'll call my father right away and ask him to bring $15,000. Please wait inside until then. When I said that, the self-proclaimed police officer nodded and looked at Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins also looked at the self-proclaimed police officer and laughed. 
I felt uneasy about the two of them, but I led them to a room. Please wait in this room. When I opened the door, the two of them looked surprised and looked at me. I said to the two of them, I'll call my father. Please wait inside. The self-proclaimed police officer and Mr. Jenkins nodded awkwardly and entered the room as prompted by me. When I finished the call to my father and entered the room, the self-proclaimed police officer and Mr. Jenkins were standing there without any particular expression. I spoke to the two of them. I'm sorry, it took a while. My father will bring $15,000 right away. The self-proclaimed police officer turned around and looked at me with a surprised expression. Mr. Jenkins was staring at a certain point and was standing there with a face that was even paler than before. That's right. In the room I led them to, my mother was lying on the bed. My mother had fallen ill and was now completely bedridden. I said while looking at my mother. Mother has been in this state for a month. She was originally weak, but it has gotten worse recently. The self-proclaimed police officer looked at me awkwardly after hearing that. Mr. Jenkins had lost his words completely. I continued, looking at the two of them. I never noticed that she was committing fraud in this situation. I still can't believe how she did it. As I said that, the two of them started talking in a low voice. I could hear Mr. Jenkins' anxious voice. Wait, that's not right. She was supposed to be at the hospital. Why is she here? The self-proclaimed police officer replied in a panicked tone. Hey, didn't you investigate properly? What's going on? Explain it. This is not good. You said his mother wasn't here, so I... The self-proclaimed police officer spoke to Mr. Jenkins in an interrogative tone. They seemed to have forgotten about my presence and started arguing. I called out to them. But it doesn't make sense. There's no way she could commit fraud in this situation. How did she do it? Mr. Jenkins, did my mother really deceive you? Was it really a month ago? I'm sorry, but could you tell me from your own mouth so that I can understand? As I bombarded Mr. Jenkins with questions, he turned pale and said, Uh, no, it might be my mistake. Maybe it wasn't Mr. Moore. Maybe it was someone else. Mr. Jenkins laughed dryly while saying that, and the self-proclaimed police officer looked at him with a puzzled expression. I continued to speak to Mr. Jenkins. Can you lose a lot of money by making a mistake? Can you mistake the person who deceived you? If it were me, I would remember it vividly. But you don't? Why did you start doubting my mother now? And how did you know that she was hospitalized until recently? Also, you. The self-proclaimed police officer, who was suddenly called by me, looked at me with a surprised expression. I said. What did you mean by that? Why would it be a problem if my mother were here? The self-proclaimed police officer laughed awkwardly and said. Did I say something like that? I nodded. Yes, you did. When you were arguing with Mr. Jenkins earlier. The self-proclaimed police officer fell silent with a wry smile. Mr. Jenkins looked at me with a pale face. As I looked at the two of them, the door opened and my father came in. Sebastian, sorry for being late. When I turned around, my father nodded slightly. The self-proclaimed police officer and Mr. Jenkins looked at my father with a small scream. My father apologized to the two of them. It seems that my wife has caused trouble. I'm really sorry. Was it Mr. Jenkins? 
There's $15,000 in here. Please check it. Mr. Jenkins received the thick envelope from my father with trembling hands. The self-proclaimed police officer also looked into the envelope with a pale face. When I looked at my father, he was looking at the two of them with a serious expression. A few minutes later, Mr. Jenkins, who had actually checked the contents of the envelope, said to my father in a trembling voice, There's definitely $15,000. I received it. The self-proclaimed police officer, who confirmed that Mr. Jenkins was putting the thick envelope in his bag with trembling hands, said in a panicked tone, Well then, we'll excuse ourselves. We'll withdraw the complaint since everything has been settled, and we'll also invalidate the arrest warrant, so please rest assured. Before I could say anything, the self-proclaimed police officer and Mr. Jenkins tried to leave the room as if they were running away. At that moment, my father shouted, Detain them! Two men grabbed the self-proclaimed police officer and Mr. Jenkins at my father's shout. While Mr. Jenkins screamed, the self-proclaimed police officer shouted, You'll pay for this, messing with a police officer! Do you even know what you're doing? My father took something out of his chest pocket and showed it to the two of them while saying, It's a coincidence. I'm also a police officer. The self-proclaimed police officer looked up at my father with a pale face when he saw the letters police inspector on it. Yes, when I called my father, I already knew that my mother, who was bedridden, had been arrested on suspicion of fraud, that a man who was thought to have actually been a victim of fraud had come with a man who claimed to be a police officer, and that all of these were lies. I had told my father all of this beforehand. I want you to come right away because I'm pretending to be fooled and buying time. Got it. I'll be there soon. Sebastian, keep them busy for 30 minutes. So, I guided the two of them to the room where my bedridden mother was and waited for my father. After putting away his police notebook, my father calmly began to speak. Do you guys know? The self-proclaimed police officer and Mr. Jenkins looked up at my father with pale faces. Looking down on the two of them, my father continued. It's fraud as soon as you take the money. Impersonating a police officer, forging badges and police notebooks is a crime of impersonating a public official. If you make an arrest warrant on your own, it's a crime to forge public documents. The self-proclaimed police officer gave up trying to shake off the arm that was being restrained, and Mr. Jenkins became quiet with a look of despair. As my father and the others began to make a commotion about taking the two away, I heard a small voice and couldn't help but shout. Shoo, quiet. Mom is. Father looked worriedly into my mother's face. Hey, do you understand? Sebastian is here too. As my father and I looked at my mother, she woke up and said with a small smile. I understand. Charles and Sebastian. It's kind of lively, isn't it? My mother, who called out my father's and my name, smiled wryly. Father breathed a sigh of relief and turned around and nodded. Thank you. Thanks to you, my wife woke up. I never thought something like this would be the trigger. You never know what life will bring. But a crime is a crime. Let's make them pay for it. Take them away. Upon hearing my father's words, the self-proclaimed police officer and Mr. Jenkins were taken away. While watching that scene, I wanted to thank the two of them a little. My mother had never talked this much even after waking up. Her eyes were somewhat vacant, and she often didn't know what she wanted to convey even when she spoke. But this time was different. She called my father and me and laughed at the commotion. When I looked at my mother, she was talking to my father about something. My father stood up, 
tapped my shoulder, and said, Sebastian, thank you. We were able to arrest the two of them because you were quick-witted. We don't know until we investigate, but from their practiced manner, they may have other crimes. I'll be late coming back again, but please take care of your mother. I replied, of course. Mother and I will be waiting for you to come back. So please be careful and don't push yourself too hard. Father nodded and left the house with the subordinate waiting outside the room. After that, my mother began to show signs of recovery. She gradually came out of the room, spent the day in the living room, went out to the garden for sunbathing on sunny days, and went for walks with my father. I felt happy seeing my mother getting better and my father's happy smile. How was this story? Please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Video. Video.